Predators Patrick Hornquist and Nick Spalling return to Nashville to take on the guy they were traded for, James Neal, next from Nashville. This city has just been so bustling with the fans of the music business and the country music here. Crazy crowds last night on the street on Broadway that you were just looking at. And let's take a look now at our tips to win, brought to you by Rivers Casino. James Neal, stop him. Coming off a hat trick is the ex-Penguin. Penguins are looking for more shots of their own. They've been outshot the last two, and the coach wants the volume of shots to increase. And when times get tough, show some resolve. There's going to be tough times in this hockey game for sure, and that man will have to stand on his head. You would think. There he is, Mark andre Fleury. Interesting starting line tonight for Mike Johnston as he goes with against Pekka Rinne. Uh, Evgeny Malkin, Nick Spalling, and Patrick Hornquist to start the game. So he'll put the two former Predators in the lineup at the very beginning, playing with Evgeny Malkin, but I don't think that'll be the regular line, Bob. But that's what they're doing just to start the hockey game here for the opening faceoff. Yeah, Mike Johnston knows uh, what it means to those two hockey players, Spalling and Hornquist, to come back to Nashville. Team they were traded from. And Hornquist had 22 goals last year. Nick Spalling, 32 points. And Peter Laviolette is undefeated in regulation behind the bench. Rob Martel, Francois Saint Laurent, the referees, Brad Kovacic, Tim Nowak are the linesmen. And from the opening draw, the Predators dump it in. The top line of Ribeiro, Forsberg, and Neil on for the Predators to start the hockey game. And uh, we'll see if the Penguins make a change. Evgeny Malkin still on the ice. They're swooping around over there on the far side as the puck has slipped inside the Nashville zone. Taking it now is Matthias Eckholm. And a great crowd here tonight in Nashville. Always a very loud crowd, almost like a college atmosphere here. And we expect it to be just an awesome atmosphere for a game on a Saturday night here in Nashville. Now here's Spalling with it. Spalling trying to get it out of his own zone. It comes back to Christian Aeroff. The Penguins have been so good in the first period, outscoring opponents 11-5, to getting off to great starts. Let's see if they can do that against the Predators here tonight. Here's Dupuis down the way. Sends it in behind, and Roman Yossi is there. Crosby watching him. Kunitz over to get it. He pokes it free to the corner, but Yossi, out of Switzerland, sends it in behind the net. Shea Weber wrapped it around near side, but Victor Stahlberg couldn't get it out. And they'll start over on the left side of the ice. They move it to center. Off the skate of Latang and picked up by Kunitz, who snaps it back to Olimata. Out in center now. Carried over the line by defenseman Latang. Blocked, and then Crosby shot it wide of the goal. Kunitz over to get a hold of it. But now it's Colin Wilson turning with it for Nashville. And the son of former uh, player Kerry Wilson on the ice. Colin Wilson. Now here's Olimata with it. Into the slot. Mata kept it in. Near side for Crosby. He was rocked into the near wall by Shea Weber. Weber again with it. Crosby gives him a shove from behind. He goes down. But Roman Yossi has the puck. And it'll come to Rob Scuderi at center. Yeah, finally Weber and Yossi get off the ice. And they log a lot of minutes, second and third of the National Hockey League. The Crosby unit had them hemmed in their own zone. Derek Roy takes a pass, trying to return the puck to Craig Smith. Comes back around near corner and up top now, taken by Seth Jones. And a right-hand shooting 20-year-old defenseman fired it wide. Anton Volchenkov is paired up with Seth Jones. You remember him from his days with the Devils and the Senators. Here's Seth Jones blasting one, and that is blocked by Brandon Sutter, and it ricochets right up into the seats on the near side. You want to be tight to the defense, not just Jones, but Weber. Now let's take a look at the ice time leaders. I mentioned Weber and Yossi, the defensive pair of the Nashville Predators. There's the captain, Shea Weber, 6'4", 233 pounds. And he averages 28-38 a game, 28-39. He's had three games over 30 minutes already this year. Yeah, incredible stuff. And Ryan Suter always atop that list. All defensemen, of course, a little easier for defense to log a few more minutes. Not to say they're not working, Staggy, but they get a little bit of a break standing on the blue line as the forwards are digging and mucking in that corner. Callie Yarncrock on now. He's the one who took the face off. And uh, the Penguins trying to get out of their own zone now. Yarncrock wears number 19 in the middle. Traded uh, for David Legwan, acquired from the Detroit Red Wings, and a shot from a sharp angle by Taylor Beck. 
Skipped off of Flurry's equipment. Turning with it now. Quick shot by Eckholm in deep. And Flurry ready for that. Where were the Penguins? They got all trapped. Here's another shot from a sharp angle. This one from Ole Jokinen. Jokinen now sets it up. And a shot by Yarncroc was blocked away. So a couple of great opportunities there off a the cycle by the Predators. And now the Penguins go the other way. And it's Como down the right wing. Trying to get around Eckholm. Dupuy follows on. He's got hold of the puck. Moves it back to Erhoff, who dumped it to the right wing corner. Erhoff led Penguin defense, but a nice time the other end against the Red Wings, and he probably played his best game in a Penguin uniform. Christian Erhoff against Detroit the other night, and he was rewarded with a lot of ice time. Here's Flurry behind the net. Around near side, Kunitz sends it up and off the stick of Patrick Hornquist. Puck is dumped back in. What a bad angle shot, Staggy, there on Marc Andre Fleury in that last shift. They have a, a game plan in mind for sure. Well, Peter Laviolette knows Fleury well from having been in the Eastern Conference with Philadelphia and the Islanders a while ago. And of course, Carolina, where he won a Stanley Cup with Jimmy Rutherford in 2006. Penguins only Mata moves it up near side to Chris Kunitz. Back for Mata. Pressured by Gostad. He finds Latang. While Gostad heads to the bench, the Penguins trying to get into the Nashville zone. They're going to have to dump it in, and Pekka Rene swings it back around left side for Eric Nystrom. They're going to have to beat the left wing lock. That's what the Nashville Predators employ. That's very tough, as you can see the Penguins' defense going D to D to D and trying to find a way in there. They might have to dump it in and go retrieve it. This is Seth Jones moving it up the left side of Philip Forsberg, and it skipped up into the Penguin bench on the far side. Well, take a look at the Predators. And a lot of speed as they went in behind the Penguins zone. And you see the Penguins got trapped up. Erhoff and Martin on the same side of the ice. Zekholm just came flying around there on his forehand stay. A good opportunity. And we saw a couple of bad angle shots there against Marc-Andre Fleury. Penguins have yet to register a shot on Pekka Rene. Four for the Predators. Well, you, better, you might want to shoot the puck on Pekka Rene. I mean, this guy is as strong as they come. He's a huge net miner. He had a, missed 51 games last year. They've kept the shots down on some games, but then they've had some high totals against them, too. It's kind of a mixed bag so far for the Predators. But their goals against average is very low, and Rene's is only 1.62 as a team, 1.66. Here's Martin wristing one. Sutter pokes it back to Martin. He wrists it towards the corner. And the man's up ice. It's James Neal. They're not going to get him a puck. They're going to rush the puck into the Penguin zone. And it's Ribeiro, very skilled hockey player, who always scores against Pittsburgh. And among players with 20 points or more in their career, Mike Ribeiro has the leading figure in points per game at 1.22. That's how productive he's been as a member of the Montreal Canadiens and Phoenix Coyotes and Dallas Stars, and now with the National Nashville Predators. He just went to the bench. Mike Ribeiro, he's the guy setting up James Neal now. This is Craig Adams dumping the puck in. Rene waits for it to come in the trapezoid around for Colin Wilson, who steers it up through the neutral zone. And it's Dupre over for Skidari. Up the wall now for Zach Sill. Very systematic play right now for both clubs. But a steal. Smith with a shot, and he fired it wide. It was a good shot by Smith. He teed it up. Yeah, it was heavy a good, shot. Good shot. Bad play by Silly. You can't go up the middle of the ice unless you know you can go tape to tape with that pass. Here's Adams with it now, and he'll push it up through the neutral zone. Eckholm tried to go to Ellis. Skidari was on his knees, sweeping the puck. And finally, Patrick Hornquist finds it. Kunitz is up ice. Crosby takes it off the wall, down the wing. Crosby to Kunitz, and it goes right by him. Now Hornquist tries to get hold of it. Crosby banging it. He scores! Sidney Crosby jams it in on the Penguins strike first here in Nashville. I think that is their second shot. Maybe their first of the hockey game. Well, a great two-on-one with speed. Sidney Crosby tried to hit Kunitz. That didn't happen. It didn't connect, but the Penguins stuck with it. Look at Crosby. That back pass off the wall. Tried to hit Kunitz. A diving predator just getting a stick on it. But they stuck with it. Only Mata kept it alive. And I believe Sidney Crosby got the last stick on it. Went off a skate, got back to the front of the net, courtesy of Mata. And was it Crosby who got the last stick on that puck? Hornquist was in there whacking at it too. So they, they credit the Penguins with two shots. The first two shots resulted in the first goal of the hockey game. No, yeah. not, not surprising to anyone here that Hornquist was in that blue paint as well. But only Mata keeping the puck alive. 
Remember, he scored the other end in Detroit, yep. sneaking up there around that goal cage. Now Malkin gets a stick on the puck, but it's deflected up into the seats on the far side. Well, anytime you get one against Pecorini, it's an achievement. And the Penguins are on the board first again. Rick Taka talking to Zach Sill. He's saying, in your own zone, you can't make that play unless you're 100% sure. Zach Sill had the puck on the wall. I know what he was thinking, but that play wasn't there. And Smith was able to deny the pass in that high zone. you got to be very precious with that puck in either side of that blue line, the defensive zone and the offensive zone. And the best play for Zach Sill there is just off the glass, off the boards, and out. The Penguins, I thought, showed a, quite a bit of patience there uh, leading up to the, the goal they got. Bob, they were dumping the puck when it was uh, necessary to do so. Other than that play by Sill, not forcing too much. And he finally got around the net and scored the goal. Now here's a puck off the end boards and grabbed on the near wall by the Predators, but it's off the stick of Forsberg and right to the Penguins. Crosby got it to Kunitz, who tried to go back to Crosby. Ropero quickly turns, finds the open man. It's Philip Forsberg trying to get into the attacking zone, and good defensive work as Paul Martin. Now we'll go back and play it. Martin and Erhoff paired up, and Mike Ropero on the ice right now, along with James Neal. I think the Predators may have made a couple of changes as that puck went back into the Penguin zone. They haven't completed the full line change yet. Ole Jokinen's on the ice. He's got the puck now on his own end. Penguins also change up. Spalling jumps on. Crosby headed off. Penguins change on the fly. Jokinen shoots the puck, and it goes off a stick and up into the netting behind Marc-Andre Fleury. Our UPMC Sports Medicine injury update. Bo Bennett currently skating on his own. It'll be a welcome addition to the lineup. Is he on ice skates or roller skates? And they, they talk a lot, Bob, about the Penguins needing a top six forward. Well, I think he got one right there in Bo Bennett, the way he was playing in training camp. No, he was maybe one of the best Penguin forwards for sure in training camp. Got fired high and wide by Ellis. Got hit, injured in practice, of course. Yes, he did. They're Spalling with it now. And Spalling can't get out of his own zone. Tries again to just force it back to neutralize. Steve Downey there, Spalling as well. A lot of traffic. Not easy to get into the attacking zone. The Predators are doing a good job clogging things up. Penguins, though, have been patient. Here's Mata, D to D. The Tang feeds it on the right side. And hard around intended for Sutter goes by him to Mata who shot hit a leg racing over to play it is Latang. Taylor Beck wanted to get there first but couldn't quite and now here's Latang dropping it off Downey for Sutter a shot gloved down easily by Pecorine and he'll hold on he's very athletic and good with that glove we invite you to tweet us here at Root Sports Pit using the hashtag Penns Booth send your comments questions and thoughts and we definitely want you to ask Bob questions because he'll give you the answers brought to you by Point Park University the well, Penguins got one more chance there on Pekka Rene from Finland. The 162 goals against average. 31 years of age, missed 51 games last year with that bacterial infection on his hip. He came back against the Pittsburgh Penguins in a 3-1 loss last year, but he's looking on top of his game early for the Preds. Rene brought it around and Skidari jamming it up on the near wall. Stahlberg goes across the rink. Ryan Ellis will dump it into the Penguin zone. Good body check down there by Rob Scuderi as he sent a man flying into the wall. And here are the Penguins going the other way. Malkin down the left wing. That was Gostad who was hit by the defenseman Scuderi. Now Ellis with it. Looks ahead out of the reach of uh, Stahlberg and it'll be an icing call. We'd like you to well. Uh, we'd like to welcome Hickory Telephone Company viewers in the Hickory area of Washington County. Thanks for watching and rooting on the Pens. All of us at Root Sports and the Penguins appreciate your support. Gostad's a 60% faceoff man, but Crosby against Gostad is 67.8%. That's the matchup right now in this circle. A tired Gostad unit. Gostad won the draw. Every year he's in the top 10 in the faceoffs in the league. Always up around 60 percent, a little, little below that. Paul Martin, Crosby, and a dance around Ellis. Gostad comes over to help out. Erhoff just took a stick in the face from Stahlberg, and neither referee saw it. And the Penguins keep the puck in the zone. 
Stahlberg whacks at it. Paul Martin protects it, shields it as he tries to keep it in. And now the Predators do get it to center. Gostad slogging his way into the zone. Just steps inside the offensive zone and then turns to go to the bench. Almost halfway through the first period, the Penguins leading one to nothing. They have three shots, four for the Predators. It's been a bit of a chess match here early in the game. Yeah, the Penguins have realized they're going to dump this puck in, and they're going, chipping it and chasing it. Something they, uh, you know, they like puck possession, but when it's not there, they can't turn the puck over that far blue line against this left wing lock. Look at all the mustard jerseys. And here's Gotch getting free and shooting. And a save by Rene. Kind of handcuffed him, but he's able to hold on to it. Yeah, nice job by the ex Predator himself. Gotch with some steam and speed down that left side. Well, Nick Spalding is back in his old stomping grounds here in Nashville, and I'm sure memories have been running through his head all day, but you know what? Let's go back a little further, say 20 years, when Nick was just a little guy on the ice in Drayton, Ontario, long before he was a predator and, of course, now a penguin. We touched on his early days just a couple weeks ago back in Toronto. We'll go even deeper when Inside Penguins Hockey debuts on November 1st, guys. Thank you, Danny. A second-round pick in 07. He played 297 games with the Predators. Nick Spalling, now a Pittsburgh Penguin. And Paul Martin brings the puck down to the corner. Centers Malkin. A quick shot off the shoulder. Ready? Rebound. Oh, Malkin almost knocked that out of midair into the goal. Como behind the net for Gino, trying to work it in on the backhand. But Eckholm's got it now for the Predators on his backhand. He spins it back up into the Penguins' end. Paul what Martin goes back. What a release there, Staggy, by Malkin. Erhoff, Malkin. Rink wide for Dupuis. Como comes over for support, takes the pass. Como shoots it. And again, Rene just gobbling everything up, not, not keeping it in play. Kenny Malkin with a quick release and a high shot. Look at caught Rene near the, near the mask, maybe on the shoulder. A tall net minder. Yeah, as he saw that puck. Watch, bing bang. It's not on his stick long. And then he tried to use his glove to get it back to his blade. Malkin has four goals, ten points, and seven career games against Nashville. Sidney Crosby has scored for the Penguins. Off the draw, right to the goal. Rene looks for the puck, flopping to his belly to try to freeze it, and that squirts behind the goal. And Spalling outworking the man on the corner for possession of the puck. Great work there on the forecheck by the Penguins. Spalling teaming up with Downey to get possession. Now it's Latang with it to Spalling. Up high. Chops it back to the corner for Downey. Downey, Sutter, and Spalling. The third line for the Penguins on the ice. Spalling to the puck. Hit by Ribeiro. Now for Latang. Forsberg forced it away from him. And Forsberg had it chopped away by Latang back to center ice. The rookie Philip Forsberg already with a great start. Plus nine, seven points on the season. Played against the Penguins last year in a call-up. Here comes Weber. He fed it right into the middle for Colin Wilson. His backhander went wide and then grabbed by Hornquist, who threw it up towards the Nashville zone. Roman Yossi going back after it. He got on his horse to get there ahead of Kunitz. And the Predators trying to get it going at center as Colin Wilson dumps it in. Flurry stops it behind the net. Dupre up the right wing boards for Hornquist. Good job to make sure he steered it back up into the Nashville zone. Number 33, Colin Wilson turns the cage, reverses it back to the corner for Roman Yossi. He's hit by Kunitz, who leads the team in hits. 28 coming into the game. And this is Dupre with it. He drives it hard around. Rene scrambling out of the net to play it. Rene is a huge goalie, 6'5", and he moves really well on his skates. Dupre back for the puck on his backhand, and he just lifts it. All the way down the ice, Seth Jones going back to play it. No icings. Zach Sill, Marcel Gotch, and Craig Adams, the Penguins fourth line on right now. Remember, they played a lot against Detroit as well. I mean, the Penguins had it all going their way until things just melted down at the end of the game. 3-1 advantage. Dissipated late in that hot game, lost in overtime. And on the forecheck is Taylor Beck for the Predators. Now it's held in by Yarncrock. He's kind of fanned on his attempt to get it to the corner, and now Paul Martin sends it back around for Christian Erhoff. Now for Gotch. Seth Jones wouldn't let him get it out. It's Jokinen shooting it wide. Yarncrock is held off the puck nicely by Erhoff. Gotch got tripped up a bit, couldn't get it out. Penguins will try again. 
You remember the shots were four nothing for the Preds. Now seven four. Predators haven't got a, a shot since that initial shift, that second shift of the game, where they registered a few. Lake Como skating really well tonight. He can motor. From behind now is Ryan Ellis. He sends it back around to the opposite corner, and the Predators just want to get it out to center ice, and it goes past Ole Mata off the stick of Stahlberg. Mata goes back around for Como. Gosta got over there. Como just ran right into him, ran him off the puck. Latang trying to get it out. Gosted got a stick on it, but it pops right to where it could be handled by Ole Mata. Six minutes to go in the first period, and the Penguins leading one to nothing. Crosby sets it up for Kunitz to Latang. Stops the puck, then shoots it. Oh, it just trickled wide. It hit something on the way through. Forsberg over is hit by Crosby, and then he got the puck and turned it into open space. Racing over to keep it in was Erhoff. Could not do so, and James Neal gets a step on Erhoff down the right wing. He's got Forsberg going to the net. Paul Martin rides him heavily into the glass. Neal turns out of that check. Try to jam it in. It's loose in front of Fleury. Pops free to where Kunitz is able to skate it out of danger. And Kunitz looks to the left side for Hornquist. Hornquist followed by Weber. He goes to work against two Predators down there until he gets some help. It was Brandon Sutter who came in, but he couldn't get control. And the Predators come back three men strong to the neutral zone. Taylor Beck trying to come to the goal, but the Penguins wouldn't let him do that. And now quickly going the other way is Brandon Sutter. He's got Downey with him and Spalling. Back to play the puck is Volchenkov. Downey's on him. Now Sutter follows on, bumps him right off the puck, moves it to the point to Dupre, and over now to Scuderi. Scuderi's wrister. He shot it wide on purpose. Over to play it as Yarncrock up the wall now for Jokinen. Couldn't get it out. He hit Dupre with it. Volchenkov stumbling. Boy, a lot of wall play in this hockey game. You saw Neal coming down. You see a lot of battles around the perimeter here as both teams have done a great job taking away the middle of the ice. Penguins did not go on the ice for practice yesterday. They worked out, and I believe they probably spent some time discussing what had happened the night before and addressing some of the issues that they want to cover here defensively. And they've looked really systematic in this game. They look really good playing solid road hockey in this first period so far. Here's Marcel Gotch. Drops it off to Ole Mata, and now for Zach Sill, out of his reach, and it'll go back into the Nashville zone for Eckholm. Matias Eckholm reversed it to the corner. Smith steered it out to center. Carried over the line by Derek Roy, the former Sabre, shot it off a shin pad of Ole Mata. 3.50 to go in the period, and the shot taken by Ellis is gobbled up by Marc-Andre Fleury. Tight check in hockey game. Sidney Crosby, the captain, on the board for the Penguins. Showing some strength as well against his old teammate, James Neal. Just shrugging him off. Sidney Crosby will visit with Dan Potash in our first intermission presented by your neighborhood Ford store with Rob and Jay. Nice ovation right now in the building for Patrick Hornquist and Nick Spalling. They did a nice tribute to them on the uh, big board here. Crosby scoring the goal in this first period, his fifth of the season from Mata and Hornquist at 621. And Hornquist ninth point for the Penguins. 4-0-1 are the Nashville Predators when they do not score the first goal. So they've showed resolve. They've been able to come back and hold the fort with great goaltending and stick within their system. Laviolette, the new bench boss here in Nashville. Barry Trotz, he's moved on. Great little pass from Dupuis to Malkin, springing him up the ice. Malkin turns his back on the defender, Eckholm. Now tries to shoot it, and Eckholm stayed with him. They get a blade on it and deflect it up into the netting. Well, they swap sweaters, and James Neal off the hat trick has got five goals for the Predators. There's Hornquist with nine points, balling with a couple. And that deal made on June 27th. No one ever doubted that James Neal was a great goal scorer. The Penguins would love to have kept him, and I'm sure Evgeny Malkin would love to have him. But the Penguins made this deal to, to add depth and to change the dynamic. They wanted to have Patrick Hornquist be a guy who would go to the net, playoff-style hockey, gritty, go into the dirty areas. James Neal is probably one of the, maybe the best in the league at scoring from a, a long distance with that wicked release that he has. He's up there, obviously, with Ovechkin and Phil Kessel. Yep. And Tyler Sagan and other guys who can shoot and score from long distance. I talked to 
Mike Fisher, the injured Mike Fisher, the sentiment of these Nashville Predators. He's out with an Achilles injury. He's rehabbing right now. He said there's nobody better in the league than that net front presence, Van Patrick Hornquist. And I said, I started to think. I said, no, I don't think there is. He said, no, there's not. So it's, it's, um, uh, you put him with Chris Kunitz, and you got two great net guys, as uh, Mike Johnston pointed out the other day. And there he is. Here's there. Latang going to Crosby up top. Takes the shot, finds Mata, his shot, and it sails right over the glove of Rene, and then skipped up into the netting. Well, Rene had to be, he was, uh, had his mind on other things in front. Hornquist was right in front of Rene, Pekka Rene in that last shift, and look at Rene, he's pushing him away, and that's always good. If you're focused on that white jersey of the opposition, that's just gonna distract you, and that's where you want it, that's where the Penguins, they can get that, get that shot down low quick. Rene's trying to look over top of Patrick Hornquist, shoot that puck down low around his feet when he's doing that. A lot of room in between those legs. Sutter takes the face off to the right of Rene against Derek Roy, and the Predators just force it back out to neutral ice. Down to 243 here in the first. Penguins have outshot the Predators 9 to 6. They lead 1 to nothing. Penguins have taken the lead in every game this year except for the game against the New York Islanders at home. Here's a backhand move, maneuver by Rob Scuderi just to the blue line. And taken there by Seth Jones. And Seth Jones moves it ahead to Craig Smith. Good American-born player comes over the line. But another American-born player, Seth Jones offside. And we hear the whistle. Just a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, look forward to Miller time later in the game. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Well, I think the more you can get the fourth line on the ice, uh, the better off you're going to be late in hockey games. The Penguins have run out of, you know, run out of energy in third periods. Their net miner said that so much uh, in the last hockey game, Staggy, and that back-to-back -back situation. We got a little tired, Grice said. You could see it, sense it in the players. You know, you have to have four lines playing. The pace of these games now, you, I mean, there hasn't been that many whistles in this first period of play. You've got to get your fourth line out there. Turning with it now is Chris Letang. And the Penguins have outscored the opposition now 12 to 5, including this one, in the first period. But they've been outscored 9 to 4 in the third. So remember that. And the Predators have outscored the opposition 9 to 3 in the third. So yeah. they've been really strong in the third. The Penguins have not been so strong, at least uh, in terms of giving up leads. And we'll see how they can uh, handle this lead here tonight. Now here's Ellis with it to the near wall for Beck, and he shoots it through traffic and flurry. Able to make the save. And Fleury has not seen a lot of activity since, as Bobby pointed out, the very early shifts of this hockey game. Only a couple of shots, three, since that first flurry that they got early in the game. And not really great scoring opportunities. Maybe the best to wrap around by James Neal. There was a high shot in the slot area, but that's, you know, Marc Andre Fleury got a rest and he's fresh and ready to go in this one. Malkin leans in to take the draw with a minute 40 to go. Mike Ribeiro's tossed out. James Neal will take the face off against his old line mate. And he smashed it to the near boards. Neal trying to get a hold of it. Malkin trying to take it away. Stepping in to help out is Philip Forsberg. He backhanded it to the corner. And good work by Erhoff to get body position on Ribeiro, his former line uh, team, no, not former teammate, also uh, a former teammate of James Neal at Dallas. Now up the near wall, Forsberg. And Ribeiro on the wall, and Malkin steps out of there with a puck. Ahead now to Pascal Dupuis. Good gap by the Predators there. Dupuis had not anywhere to go, but he just softly dumped it behind the defense, down the boards. Homo came over to try to keep it alive, but the Predators bounce right back. O'Neal right up the wing, just dumped it into the right wing corner. Forsberg goes in after it. Nice a turning move there to make sure he protected the puck coming out of the corner, but then the pass. From the near wall by Ribeiro was an errant one, and Rene keeps the play going. A quick up here to Ribeiro as the Penguins are changing. Ribeiro has time, shoots it up high. Flurry the save, rebound. Oh, it's just pushed wide of the goal. Oh, boy, Martin get a stick in there. Neil looked like he was going to tap it into a wide open cage. Great play by Rene to get that puck up. Hornquist with it now, shoots it. I think he was trying to surprise Rene there, but he was ready with a right pad. Rene may have been cheating a bit there, seeing Crosby coming down that right side. He definitely was cheating. He should uh, have expected Hornquist is going to shoot that puck. Hornquist never looked at the net. Good collision here. Crosby went down. Now Latang with it with 15 seconds remaining in the period. Look out here. Bouncing puck. Kunitz settles it down ahead to Hornquist. One touch pass to Crosby ahead for Mata. And it comes right to the Predators' defense. Five seconds to go in the period. Shea Weber with it. And a long shot by Gostad. 
And the horn ending the first period here in Nashville. Pecorini got the puck up on a penguin change. And when it came to the net, off Ribeiro's shot, Neal deflected it, hit the goal post, and Martin was there. Just got through Marc-Andre Fleury, and Martin not allowing Neal to get that puck in the empty cage. Penguins out shoot the Preds 10 to 8. They lead 1 to nothing after 20 minutes. Let's go to Robin Jay. Yeah, you take a goal, you take a little early luck, Jay, and it's 1 0 Penguins. Yeah. You know, good first period. You know, you're going against a team that's going to play it tight. They're trying to be more aggressive. But sometimes you're handcuffed. You know, if you're a coach and you want to be more aggressive, you got to look at what talent you got. And again, they're a hard working team, but Pittsburgh just kind of fell in their way, and eventually they're going to bust through. And getting that one by Crosby, again, a good start for first period again for Pittsburgh. Crosby's fifth, and Dan Potash is going to catch up with him. Jay's going to tell us straight. We also have highlights from around the league, all that and more coming up in the first intermission report when we return after this. Pittsburgh Penguins have won four games in a row against the Nashville Predators. Mark Andre Fleury would surely like to make it five in a row. Let's go back to Bridgestone Arena where Paul Steigerwald and Bob Airy are getting set for the second period. Guys. Thank you, Rob. Yes, Mark Andre Fleury's been a big part of that. This is his ninth straight start against the Nashville Predators, and he had a good start to this hockey game, Bob. Yeah, it was fantastic. He made some big saves early. There was a push from the Nashville Predators. He stopped all eight Predator shots, wraparound opportunities, a couple of bad angle shots against Mark andre Fleury. They were trying to waste up high against the Flower. It was now stopped. 72 of his last 75 shots that Nashville has peppered him with in our day automotive on this date. 33 saves, 20th career shutout for Marc-Andre Fleury back in 2011. He's coming off a day's uh, you know, a game's rest. Grice, Thomas Grice played the last game, and now Marc-Andre Fleury is back. And there's a look at his record, his career versus Nashville. I remember I mentioned 72 of the last 75 he stopped against them. And he looked good in that first period for sure. Sidney Crosby with a little passion in that first period too as he was able to get to the net, the dirty areas, as people like to say, and he scored that goal as he, he and Hornquist were jamming away at Pekka Rinne and got what I would call an ugly goal, Bob, uh, to make it one to nothing. Sid scores a lot of beauties. That was kind of an ugly goal. Yeah, and, and you need to score a lot of those ugly goals, and, and that's been the problem for the Penguins. When tough, uh, tough times come, you're not going to score that pretty goal. James Neal's not in your lineup. He scored a few pretty ones from outside. You, you got Hornquist now. You got Crosby. And everybody will tell you, you got to go to that blue paint if you're going to score goals against top netminders in the National Hockey League. we got two in this game right now. In the opening draw, the puck into the Nashville zone, and Eckholm sends it across for Ellis. Malkin tries to pick his pocket. Ellis finds Eckholm. Rivero over there. Dupuis keeps it alive. Dupuis steps off the wall with it, shoots it. Saved by Rene, the rebound. He can't freeze it. But the Predators are able to clear it out of danger. Right back in. Penguins are changing now. So good work again as the Penguins forecheck turned the puck over and they got a good scoring opportunity. Now the puck up into the Penguins zone. Back to get it goes Paul Martin. Backhands it up the near wall. Hornquist with it. Sends it into the middle off the stick of Kunitz. Roman Yossi skates at the center. Looks to the right wing off the right skate of Eric Nystrom. He gets in after it behind the net. Puck wandered away from him up the wall and kept on traveling in that fresh ice, but doesn't come out. Paul Martin's got to go back. He's hit by Gostet. Nystrom follows on. That was an errant play by Kunitz. Oh, he gave right to Nystrom, and he couldn't really corral the puck. As Kunitz accidentally knocked it back onto his own goal. Penguins are playing with fire, especially that pass that's out in the middle of the ice there. I know they want to use that as a way to exit their own zone, but that pass has got to be spot on. Colin Wilson centers. Derek Roy can't handle the pass. Stahlberg turns out of the check of Erhoff. Wilson up the wall, finds Roy. They cycle the puck. Out to Weber, a blast. <laughs> that went wide of the goal and came caroming off the end boards. And it went down the ice as fast as a lot of shots do in this league. And Hornquist knew it was coming. He tried to slide to block it. That was over 100 miles an hour. And you got to be tight on. A guy like Shea Weber, you cannot have a lot of distance between you and the puck. He doesn't mind shooting it high either. Olimata drops it back. And the Penguins set it up from their own zone. The Predators change. 
stretch pass for Downey off his skate. Volchenko back to get it. Couldn't get it out. Didn't get a lot on it. Mata threw it to the net. That's off his skate. The tang over. Shoots it from a sharp angle. And Rene ready for that. And Jokinen hits the linesman with it. Following on is Yarncroft. Yarncroft around Ole Mata. Pally Yarncroft with it. Sends it back in behind the goal. Taylor Beck trying to play it. The tang there taking it away. Now it's Adams. Taking the pass from Latang. And then the Predators just go D to D. Penguins change. It has been like this the whole game, really. Kind of a kind of very systematic game. Yes, and systematic right there with the 1 3 1. They're able to stop. Predators coming through the neutral zone and get a change, forcing the dump in. Dupre muscling up on a man down in the corner. Beck. Racing over Scuderi, poked it up the wall, but it's going to be held in. Forsberg whips it back towards the goal. Ribeiro is there. Mike Ribeiro sends it behind. Scuderi there. Oh, he ran right into the body of James Neal behind the net. And the puck comes to the near boards. Ribeiro is hit hard on the boards by Dupre. And then Forsberg shot it wide. Now Sill over. He couldn't get it out. He'll try again. Gets help this time from Gotch, but it didn't go any further than where Roman Yossi could carry it right back into the Penguin zone, and Yossi flying around the net. Yossi goes to Weber in his blast. And blocked yeah, away. Ribeiro. That shot hit his own man, Ribeiro, that time, Staggy, and there's bodies all over the place right now. Neil's throwing that uh, backside hit around, that, uh, using the rump, if you will, a couple times in that shift. Malkin stepped off the bench, took a pass, Trying to slither down the boards. Victor Stahlberg's got it. Falls down. Como has it now on his backhand. Malkin back on his skates. Como tried to get it to him. Predators want to get it out. Penguins won't let him do it. Como held it into the corner for Malkin. He confronts Techholm, who knocks him down eventually. But the Penguins maintain possession. Martin to Kunitz. Now to Malkin. Trying to wheel it in front to Como. Como knocked down Ribeiro. Eckholm's got the puck behind his own goal. Penguins change up ahead. I mean, Penguins uh, a little bit of a 1-2-2 two, two here they're playing. Not so much the 1-3-1 one, one that was so visibly obvious in the first couple of hockey games. They changed the neutral zone up a little bit here. Foot race for the puck. Erhoff gave it away. Back try to center. Taken away beautifully. Crosby bearing down as he comes in over the line, drops it back. Quick shot by Erhoff and a save by Rene. Penguins are going to get a power play here. Penalty coming up against Nashville. Yeah, that's a tough call there. It looked like Hornquist provided a little bit of interference. It's going to be a hold against the Predators trying to get through that block. Look at Hornquist. He gets in the way of the Predators, so a little bit of a hold, and Hornquist goes down. But a smart veteran play by Hornquist, just getting in the way of the back checker. Patrick Hornquist shooting the puck a lot. He had no shots the other night in Detroit, but he's still among the leaders. And he did have one in the first period, whacking away at it there on Pekka Rene. And Crosby had no points in his last two games prior to the goal here tonight to get the Penguins in flight. And you have to go back to 2009 to find three games where Crosby has been pointless. UPMC Sports Medicine power play for the Penguins. Remember when we were raving about how the power play was unstoppable? Well, now it's over its last five of the last couple of games, but it doesn't always go the way you want, and the penalty killing all of a sudden has picked up. This would be a great opportunity to get that next power play goal here against the Predators, already leading one to nothing. Como behind the net. Second unit on as Sutter moves it back to Latang. Back for Brandon Sutter. Poked away from him by Gostad, and Sutter will go get it to center ice. Predators change penalty killers. Sutter winds it up now for the Penguins. Over the line for Latang. Latang shoots it. Blocked. And now Sutter has it. Out to Malkin. Out to Latang. Gino. Latang shoots and it's wide of the goal. And with that sharp angle shot, if it's not on the net, that's what it does. It goes off the corner boards and all the way back. He wants to shoot the puck more. He didn't shoot in Detroit. Look out. Kunis behind the defense. And Seth Jones tried to stop him. He still got a good shot away. And Rene just stood tall to stop Chris Kunis with Seth Jones bugging him as he went in. 
And now Kunitz has it again, and he's got Hornquist going to the net. Drops it to Crosby. Across to Malkin. Backhand shot. Blocked in front. Seth Jones turns and finds the opening. Good speed off the rush by the Pittsburgh Penguins. And then they back off the Predators defense. Get another opportunity. Malkin in the high slot on the backhand. You don't see Malkin pulling the trigger on the backhand too often. Patrick Hornquist steps out of his own zone. 23 seconds remaining on the penalty to Ole Jokinen. Preds are 14th in the penalty kill category. Hornquist over the line, lost control of it. He got knocked off his stick by Colin Wilson and heads back across to the bench. Only one more rush for the Penguins on this power play. It's Christian Erhoff deking as he comes over the line, finds Chris Kunitz. Kunitz holds it. Penalty's over. J Jokinen's on the ice. Downey banging in there to get control, helping Gotch get control of the puck. He moves it out to Erhoff, back to Gotch. He peels back, shoots it off the glove of Rene Martin. Look at how he just slithers down the boards to maintain possession of the puck. Loses it behind the net. Downey tried to center for Spalling in the slot, and the Predators would have none of that. Now Yarncroc is hit by Spalling. Downey working the end boards. Spalling follows on. Great work by the Penguins here. Eckholm having trouble. It's going to be a penalty Backhand here. Backhand try by Gotch off the side of the net. I believe it's a penguin penalty, Staggy. After all that, they yep. were working so hard in the offensive zone, they take a penalty. Yep. And they had a breakaway. Rene, left pad, and left glove. Big save there to keep it 1 0. Well, with those two penalty minutes, Steve Downey now leads the Penguins in penalty minutes. 19 total, a hook from the backside here. Stick comes in. Pretty low, I thought, and uh, pretty ticky tacky foul there. But the faceoff comes down to the Penguin zone, and the Predators are on the power play. Penguins' penalty kill has been superb, Staggy. Really has picked it up here in the last couple of hockey games. Penguins win the faceoff. That's always a big part of it. Brandon Sutter so good on the draws, and the Penguins able to clear it all the way down. They've killed 15 to 16 Pittsburgh over the last four games. Ribeiro to the left side of Neal. Up top it goes. Weber, or I make that uh, Jones and Ellis. Ellis at the points for the uh, Predators. Oscar Dupuy and Brandon Sutter up top. Ole Mata, Chris Letang are back on the penalty kill. Ellis, skilled player. Backhands it behind. Neal keeps it moving. And Ribeiro, very tricky player over there on the half wall. Ribeiro out to Ellis. He cranks it up and fires it wide. I don't know if Fleury saw that at all. No, I don't think so. Right by the glove. He could hear it. Ribeiro again. Neal goes to the front of the net. Forsberg's in the slot. Ellis has it. Jones. And they just set it up now. Forsberg again in the slot. Ribeiro couldn't get the puck to either Forsberg or Neal. And then all of a sudden, there's Latang popping in there to take it away and carry it back to center. And Latang will head to the bench. The Penguins change penalty killers. You know, the Predators had the puck in the Penguins' end, but it couldn't just, they couldn't find the lane to get the puck to a guy they wanted to get it to. Where's Shea Weber? Why was he I was not on the power play? I was wondering the same not thing. On right now. I know you were, and uh, so am I. He was hit by Crosby. To the net, Wilson. Oh, he couldn't corral the puck. He lost it just as he tried to go to the back end. Wilson with it again. There's Weber's Weber. out there now. Weber's on the second power play unit. Wilson shoots it. In front of the, was in front of the net. Now it's Roy with it, and he's on the second unit with Yossi and Weber. It's a unique uh, setup for Peter Laviolette. Well, uh, Yossi and Weber, oh, they do play together, but there was a TV timeout there. We had a little bit of a break, and I would have thought Weber would have came out to start that power play. He gets about 25 seconds, and that's a big break for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Kick off your Sunday nights with Panthers Rewind on Root Sports. Relive every Panthers touchdown, pass, and play from their most recent matchup every Sunday night. This fall continuing with their game against Georgia Tech. Panthers Rewind tomorrow at 6 on Root Sports. Predators Laviolette, he also knows that Crosby comes out at the end of a penalty kill or that first shift after, and, and he really wants Weber to be out there against Sidney Crosby, Weber, and Yossi. So who knows what, uh, you know, this game has been a chess match. Sometimes you can overthink it, though, and I'd, 
Boy, Weber in that shot. If you keep it off, off the ice on the power play, that's a big advantage. Kunitz skating well, drops it back to Scuderi and back down for Paul Martin. Penguins continue their uh, strength on the penalty kill. Weber with it now. Lifts it out to center. Dupre try to use the skate to stop it. Jokinen bumps him after he sends the puck to center, and then Gostet fires it hard around, where it'll be taken by Christian Erhoff. Headmans the puck, it's airborne, knocked down right to the stick of Hornquist. He throws it towards the net, and Rene smartly reaches out. He's very nifty with that glove, able to turn it over and make catches with the, of the puck. That's what he did there. We'll be back. Still 1-0 Penguins. Well, Rick, I know you would love to add to this 1-0 lead, but the guys upstairs keep referring to this game as a chess match. Offensively, has it been difficult to find time and space? Well, you know what? you, you got to be patient. You know, if, if, you got to live for another shift. You know, if we're up 1-0. If it's not there, don't force plays. And that's the discipline of this team. It's not to make something that's not there. Rick, thank you. Thanks, buddy. Guys? That's good stuff right there. And it's, uh, yeah, they recognize it. Be patient. And they already have a lead here. Como Nashville. takes it in the corner, turns out on his backhand, back to the forehand from Malkin. Let it go through. Stahlberg is there. Dupuy tries to jump him. Mata came down the wall to keep it alive behind the net. Malkin reaching in, trying to get control. Gets help from Dupuy. Out to Latang and out of Mata. Slap shot. Was looking for a redirect there. It was a shot pass. Look out here, Nystrom skating in there along with Stahlberg. Stahlberg chasing Mata. I was afraid that uh, he was going to get the puck to Nystrom, but no damage done. And now the Tang is a clear lane. Puck wanders off his stick. He's got to go get it, and he shoots it. And a save by Rene. And the rebound came right to Eric Stahlberg. Victor Stahlberg is his first name, Victor. Now at center ice. Forsberg trying to get in there. He's got the pass from Neal with a goal. And before he got a piece of that, he may have gone off the crossbar. Either way, he does not score as it goes up and out of play. So Forsberg right in tight. Bill Forsberg set up perfectly here by James Neal. I think he just, the puck got caught up in a stick. I think he went straight up and over everything. I think it was a field goal. <laughs> and the puck's going to come all the way out to outside the blue line. Had it hit the glass at all, or flurry at all, or the crossbar at all, the puck would have stayed in the zone, but straight out into the netting. Brandon Sutter trying to get around Volchenkov. Couldn't do that. Libero turns it up the wall for Forsberg. Nice reception of the pass there by Seth Jones. Busting down the wing, the defenseman shoots it. Just got a piece of the right arm of Mark andre Fleury. Sutter with it, shooting up high. Rene fights that one off and lands on the back of the net. <laughs> That's a couple times tonight that that puck's popped up in the air on him. I think the puck's been bouncing off players' sticks. It's, it's just uh, slippery out there so far in this hockey game. Nobody can get a handle. Polchenkov's well, lead pass off a stick. Paul Martin. Gotch sends it back to the corner, and there's Forsberg again. Up the wall for number 15, Craig Smith. Was a plus 16 last year for the Predators. Smith, number 15. The Penguins go the other way, and it's Gotch. Gotch fired, pass save made, and the rebound. Colin Wilson able to get a piece of it to get it to the corner. And Ribeiro leads it ahead now for Wilson. Simon Dupre will go back to play it for Pittsburgh. Strong on the puck as he turns the corner. Up the wall for Sill. And taken away now by Derek Roy of Nashville. Number 14, Matthias Ekholm controls it now. Swedish defenseman ahead to Colin Wilson. Back behind the net for Derek Roy. Nobody in front of the net. Malkin takes it right away from Roy and moves it up the boards. Great play by Malkin. Now Como leaves it for Dupre. Como heads to the net. Dupree shoots it off the blocker, Rene. Dupuy with a blast, and that's blocked away. Another good rush by Simone Dupre. One from his own zone. That one into the offensive zone. Here's Latang. The shot hit a leg. He's got to get back. Roy, I think he's tired here. He's going to get off. 
Roy will go to the bench after backhanding it into the Penguin zone. Do you think it mattered the way Latang was getting back on his horse? He's got the strongest legs. Such a great skater there, and uh, he tracked down Roy in a couple strides. Weber ahead to Beck. Taylor Beck lifts it up over the glove of Fleury and behind the goal, Latang right there for Ole Mata. Up on the right wing to Sidney Crosby. Looks back, holds it. Crosby shoots it. Oh, he just missed the net on the blocker side of Rene. Oh, boy. I don't know how it didn't hit Hornquist in front. Good Hornquist working there. Against Weber. And he lived with Weber for a couple of years. And he Crosby first almost got away with one there. I think he might have tripped up one of the Predators, but nothing called. And now Sid's got the puck to Kunitz. Kunitz fakes the shot. Crosby goes behind the net. Kunitz finds Paul Martin. His shot stopped with a rebound. Skipped right past the stick of Sidney Crosby. Weber's got no stick. Now he's going to have to play soccer if it comes his way. Roman Yossi moves it into the middle. Yarn Kroc dumps it in. The Predators make a wholesale change. The Penguins with a quick up. As Hornquist steers the Paul Martin pass into the Predators zone. And then Rene gives it away to Hornquist. The shot nothing on it. And Rene decides he better freeze it, and Shea Weber's stick is stuck in the wall back there. Yeah, the Zamboni doors there. That's dangerous. Talk about dangerous. That high shot. Rene couldn't track it down as it hit the net. Yes, James Neal is wearing some new colors this season, and while that may take some getting used to, well, some things never change. A teammate snapped this picture of Neal getting his hair done the night before their opener and then tweeted it out. A true story here, guys. James told me last year that the reason why his hair doesn't fall out because he rarely washes it. That works? Really? What's he do? Change the oil in it? <laughs> Staggy, you and I can't talk. <laughs> yeah, right. Wish we would have known that a long time ago. <laughs> well, he's coming off the hat trick. Three goal performance, 3 2 win over Chicago. He hit the goalpost on a redirection in the first period of play, but have been all Penguins in the second. Shots 10 11 to 2 here right now. Predators trying to get it going offensively. Smith leaves it there for Roy. He throws it in front off a of skate. It comes right back to Roy. And he tried to pass it. It went off the back of the netting with a couple of guys down in front of Marc Andre Fleury. The whistle blows. Well, Nashville's got a great defenseman, and it's Seth Jones, and there he is playing for Coach Mike Johnson, the Penguins' new coach in 12-13. The Portland winner, Hawks, and you know, Mike Johnson was asked about Seth Jones today in a scrum, said how good he was on both sides of the puck. You know, he could change a game defensively or offensively. At only 20 years of age, born in Plano, Texas, six foot four, Seth Jones. Taking fourth overall in 2013. Some great players have come through Portland. And, of course, the Penguins have one coming. And Derek Pouliot has just uh, returned to the lineup in Wilkes-Barre recently. A little conversation here. Mike Johnson and the referee. 38, Francois Saint Laurent. Predators have a man advantage. Yeah, there was and a they're conversation. They're back in the box, and it must have been something to do with that collision in front of the net. Yep. Well, there's too many men on the ice. ice for Pittsburgh. So a bench minor. Second chance for the Predators with a man advantage. Let's see if they can tie the game here. The Penguins penalty killers were outstanding last time around, but they win the draw. It's Derek Roy with a shot. He took a little off it. Fleury made the save on the rebound. Right to Dupuis, and then it oh, skipped over the glove of Rene trying to play it. <laughs> that puck is all over the place today. Shea Weber is on the first power play this time. Smith dumps it in, tries to get in there first, but only Mata got there first. And only Mata able to find Brandon Sutter, who then He's able to whack it back up into the Nashville zone. So great work by Ole Mata there. Now it's Adams and Gotcha up front. Scuderi and Paul Martin are back on the penalty kill. Left wing to Derek Roy, the former Sabre and star. Gave it away essentially to Craig Adams. And Adams can't get around Wilson who got the puck and moved it to the point. Just out of the reach of Yossi and the Penguins steal it. And they're going to get a chance here in a two-on-one. It's Gotch and Adams. Adams closes in. Blocker save made by Rennie on Craig Adams. 
He was looking for maybe a rebound there. It was such a big, big rebound that it never went right by Gotch. The defenseman took the pass away. Adams had to shoot the puck. Rene trusted the defenseman. You see how far out he came? He was way on top of the blue paint. He's already six foot five. There was no room for Adams. And that's what James Neal said about him today. He said he is so big, there's nothing to shoot at. Ribeiro to Neal. Forsberg in the high slot. Shot by Jones. He missed the target. Ribeiro ends up with the puck off the glass. Mike Ribeiro to Forsberg. Not a lot on that shot. Stick came right out of the hands of Brandon Sutter. Unfortunately, Paul Martin was able to get there and get it out. Now it's brought back in on an offside call on the Predators. And we're down to a 19 seconds to go on the too many men penalty against the Penguins. Now let's let's take a look at that too many man defense on the rush. It looked like they, they were both going to change. Martin came over, then he said no. Then Matta jumped on. He got to back to the bench, but the Penguins had six white jerseys on the ice there before the collision in front of Mark Andre Fleury. So Downey serving it. Scotts will take the face off against Ribeiro. Ribeiro wins it cleanly to Ellis. Over to Jones. Hard around to the near side. They crash in there to try to get possession. Latang went down. Jones has to go get it. Six seconds to go on the penalty. Ellis, again, a half slapper. Fleury able to fight it off, and the Penguins quickly clear. Only Mata has just been so good. He's just always in the right spot, isn't he? Now he goes to the bench. Except when he was on the ice for the too many men call. <laughs> <laughs> Penguins to get a quick change there in the neutral zone. Dan Potash will speak with Ole Mata in the intermission. Here's Crosby, Hornquist, off the goalpost. I think it hit Rennie and the goalpost. Rennie is so far out again, it skipped off of him and then off the outside of the post. Yeah, just off his glove, was it? Off that goalpost, Hornquist looking for a second point, the X spread. Minute 46 remaining. Yossi. He's got some room to skate. Surrounded by white jerseys. Yossi protects the puck. Weber. Jokinen's shot off the stick of Dupre. Who hits Jokinen in the corner. Dupre goes down. Gets back up. Jokinen. Can't get it to the point. Malkin steps in there trying to get a hold of it. Now it's Dupre, and that's a tough play there. He's a left shot. He had to jam it up the wall somehow. And no icing on the play as Como gets in there against Weber. A couple of great plays there. I think it was Dupre again in the face of Weber. Not allowing Weber that big slap shot either, Staggy. So Pascal Dupre, boy, he's so good defensively. Great to have him back in the lineup. One minute remaining in the period. Predators have only 12 shots on goal, which means they've had only four here in the second period. And the Penguins have had 12. They've got 22. But it's only 1-0 Pittsburgh. Penguins want that shot volume, as Mike Johnson says. And their losses, regulation losses, both of them, they registered under 30 shots. Yep. And Rick Taka wants patience, patience. He's getting it. Shot by Gostad is off a stick. Look at that support. Three white jerseys, now three, now four white jerseys. Five. Within about 15 feet of one another. What a battle. This is a battle in the trenches right here. And Stahlberg ends up with it and centers it. Oh, all the Downey. way through for Ellis. Downey getting involved with one of the Predators on the near side. It's Gostad. And a shot goes off a leg and trickles just wide of the net. Four seconds to go in the period. Martin is there. Paul Martin up the boards for Sutter. Just lifts it back to neutral ice as time expires. So Downey and Gostad were jostling one another. Yeah, Downey, Downey realized the Penguins are up 1-0. You have to be smart. If you're playing on that edge, you can't go over it. And Patrick Marquist, look at this chance. There's the snapshot off a stick, then off the glove. Rennie holds that glove up there in kind of a strange manner. Got a piece of it, then off the goal post. Still 1-0 here going to the third. Let's go to Robin Jay. 
Saggy and Bob, thanks very much. And the Penguins have done a nice job of keeping shots away from Mark Andre Fleury here tonight. Yeah, even with the puck bounding all over the place, it seems to be bouncing. We watch games here in Pittsburgh, and, and Pittsburgh being a fast, skilled team, they got to gather it up. But they've had great opportunities. Rene, you saw that replay right there of Hornquist off the post. Again, I believe Nashville's a team that has to manufacture every opportunity, and Pittsburgh's getting in the way on the power play. They're getting their sticks in the lanes, bodies blocking shots. Good job. And we've talked about that. You heard Saggy talking about it as well. The Penguins have been not very good in the third. Nashville has been excellent. So we'll have a preview of the third period coming up. We'll see what happens tonight. Also, Dan Potash with the player interview. And we'll have a little telestration from Jay and analysis when we return after this. The Pens are up 1-0 on a Sidney Crosby first period goal. If you're just joining us, here's what you've missed. Crosby takes it off the wall, down the wing. Crosby to Kunitz, and it goes right by him. Now Hornquist tries to get a hold of it. Crosby banging it, he scores! Ribeiro has time, shoots it, up high, Flurry the save, rebound. Oh, it's just pushed wide of the goal. He wants to shoot the puck more. He didn't shoot it in Detroit. Look out, Kunitz behind the defense, and Seth Jones tried to stop him. He still got a good shot away, and Rene just stood tall. Here's Crosby, Hornquist, off the goal post. I think it hit Rennie and the goal post. Well, the sunset here in Nashville was uh, quite enjoyable. And of course, when it gets dark out here, it gets a lot of fun down there on Broadway. Let's take a look at uh, Bobby, if we can, the uh, shots on goal here to kind of give people an idea of how the shot volume has gone down over the course of the game for the Pens. Oh, there you see it right there. The Penguins have got off to great starts, 75, 71, 52. And again, tonight, 10 in the first, 12 in the second. What will they do in the third period tonight for Mike Johnson's team and uh, they're gonna have to keep this man James Neal off the board Staggy. It's James Neal bobblehead night. He has only one shot so far in the game. Yeah and then he hit the goal post on a redirection and he was mucking it up in the second coming off the hat trick performance in the last hockey game for Nashville but nothing so far so we'll see what happens in this third. The Penguins want to stay patient but aggressive. <laughs> Pascal Dupuy got a stick on it and it comes through neutral ice up into the Nashville zone. Pekka Rene leaves it behind the goal. Dupuy steals, looks right wing to Como. Now to Malkin, trying to cut in. He was checked from behind, and the Predators on that fresh ice here at the start of the third go the other way, but the Penguins slow them down in the neutral zone as Malkin, in an effort to back check and get control, was successful. And now here's Christian Ehrhoff. He'll drive it up in to the Nashville zone. Predators just take it right away, and again, you're seeing a lot of this the whole game, like D to D passing, trying to get through the neutral zone, not a lot of room, having to dump the puck in. Olimata goes back for it into his own zone, a minute into the third. Penalty here. Nice penalty trip. coming up, and the Predators get control, so they take a penalty in the offensive zone. Yeah, they want to get aggressive, get onto their forecheck, and Nystrom's a physical body. He wants to really hit Chris Letang with a hard hit. And here he wraps up Mata a little bit with the stick. Mata goes down. He's able to draw that penalty. And the Penguins power play comes onto the ice. And boy, oh, if they could get that second one on the board, that would go a long way. Crosby steps out here to take the draw against Gostad. Penguins force it back. Of going back into their own zone. Good aggressive forecheck here by Nashville. It really stunted the breakout of the Penguins. Latang skating well as he came into the Nashville zone, but then he ran into traffic and offside is called. Very aggressive, very aggressive. And I think Rene's been aggressive too. He's been coming out to cut down the angles. Take a look at his save percentage. How it's elevated in the third and overtime. And this is uh, 
957. I mean, he, he's going to be tough here in this third period. He's been tough the whole hockey game. So you get your shots while you can. You get some traffic in front, and you take your chances. One might be enough in this game. Kunitz, Latang, UPMC Sports Medicine power play. Crosby, pass for Latang doesn't connect. Flurry comes way out to hurry the play along, and it's Malkin. With Hornquist and Crosby, Latang and Kunitz on the power play. Comes right to Crosby to Malkin and he steers it in. And the Penguins take a 2-0 lead. A beautiful setup by Sidney Crosby. And Rene was fooled. And the Penguins cash in on the power play. Yes, but don't everybody else be fooled. That was a pass, not a shot. Crosby knew exactly what he was doing. That was beautiful. As Malkin came in with a stick on the ice, provided that target. Great. Entry there by Malkin had the puck knocked off, but Sidney Crosby just fired a hard, hard puck, a pass, a slap pass in the direction of Malkin, who just had to redirect it by the long-legged Pecorene. And the Penguins get on the board on the power play, which is number one in the National Hockey League, and they're up by two. Malkin scoring his third of the season. And that'll uh, put a dent in the third period save percentage. Well, a tough penalty for the Predators to take in the offensive zone results in a power play goal. That's a huge goal here early in the third period. Shot taken by Volchenkov is blocked. Down he gets to it. And he lost his stick and he <laughs> broke runs it. right over Smith. But the Predators have the puck and it's Seth Jones with it to the net. He hit a couple things as it went through. And now Colin Wilson turns away from Brandon Sutter. Wilson does a good job of shielding the puck with his pass for Seth Jones. Hits Spalling and it ricochets all the way back into the Predator zone. Just for a brief second, down he played that puck with a broken stick. He had blocked a shot from the point. And it broke his stick. He just realized it as he went to play the puck in the corner. And fortunate for the Penguins, not called for playing with a broken stick. The Tang skies one up into the Predator zone and back to get it goes Matthias Eckholm. Philip Forsberg looks for Ribeiro. He tried a sneaky little behind the back maneuver and Mata wouldn't let him do that. And now Mata's got the puck ahead to Malkin. Malkin trying to get a step. Finds Dupuy. Back for Como. No shots taken. And Como reverses it back into the corner. Now it goes past Como and out to center. A two on two here. The Penguins trying to get back to outnumber the Predators. And a shot by Ribeiro. And that was a sneaky one there off the blocker of Fleury. Dupuy crashing in there trying to get possession. He was able to pop the puck free. Malkin snaps it ahead down to Como, and he'll dump it into the right wing corner. Smart play, patient, and then heading to the bench for a change. Blurry, in fact, was going to the bench, too, so another delayed penalty situation. Yes. And Mark andre Fleury with an assist on the Malkin goal. Yes, there he shuffles it up. Malkin takes it end to end. It goes from Malkin to Crosby, back to Malkin. That's good enough for assist. And a career 13th assist for Marc Andre Fleury, setting that breakout up to Malkin. Another play. UPMC Sports Medicine power play. Power play assist for Malkin, too, Stevie. Crosby takes the draw. One cleanly by Gostad, and then sent all the way down. Gostad skating well up into the Penguin zone. And It'll be taken by Latang now. He'll start it up ice with a man advantage. Again, it's the number one unit of the Penguins. Hornquist, Kunitz, Crosby, Latang, and Ole Mata. Malkin's not out here right now. It's Ole Mata. A little bit more of a defensive posture for the Penguins here. Look out. Eric Nystrom can't drag it with him. Kunitz pushes it along now for Hornquist to Mata. Ole Mata snaps it for Kunitz. Steps around Ole Jokinen. Kunitz swings it back to Gino, who did just step on the ice. Malkin's got it. Tried to send it up for Crosby. It came right back to the corner. Malkin gloves it down over there against the glass. Roman Yossi wants to get it out. Moves it behind the net, where it's helped along up the near boards, but not out. Latang holding it in. Weber couldn't clear it. Now, Malkin, again, he's been working extremely hard tonight on the boards. 
finally the Predators able to clear the puck back into the Penguin zone. This has been a very hard working game for the Penguins. And you mentioned it earlier, Bob, how much play's been on the wall. Yeah, it has. And you know how hard their power play works, Daggy. That's been really the trademark of this number one power play in the National Hockey League is the way they work. Malkin points in all seven games this year. Feeds it to the corner. Downey. Crosby. Great move on Wilson. Looks back. Finds Erhoff. Half slapper pass. It was a shot pass for Crosby. In front now, lose Lupuy, and he scores! Pascal Lupuy, a piece of cake for him, and the Penguins lead it 3 to nothing. And that is 400 points in the career of Pascal Dupuy. Crosby keeping it alive. Downey, I believe, with a stick there to shuffle it off the pads of Pekka Rene. The puck around the wall. Look at Crosby, protected. He goes back to the point. There's the shot pass. It doesn't work out. Crosby keeping it alive. Downey chips it to the netminder. A big fat rebound for Dupuy. And for Pascal Dupuy, 400 points in the National Hockey League. And yet another power play goal for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, you're playing with fire if you're going to go to the penalty box. And Penguins making the Predators pay again. And the Predators, the only team in the National Hockey League coming into this one undefeated in regulation. The Prey lost the puck at the blue line. The Penguins have plenty of people back here as the Predators come ahead. And offside call on Taylor Beck. And in over the line backwards. Out of control. Quiet crowd now, but a long way back for that man. Pascal Dupuis injured December 22nd in Ottawa. ACL surgery, got himself back, was hit by a puck in the back of the spine, taken off on a stretcher this season, and but he was back the next game. 400 points in his career coming over from Atlanta with, with Hosa in a trade, and uh, wow. He was, certainly wasn't a throw-in. <laughs> what a player. Remember when we were talking to P.K. Subban and telling him how good Pascal Dupuis was and he was kind of assuming that it was because he was playing with Sidney Crosby and we tried to tell him, no, no, he don't understand. No, you have to watch doesn't. him every night. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter who he plays with. No, no, he's, he's going to play the same way. And when's the last time Pascal Dupuis scored a power play goal? That's a good point. Might have to look that one up. That's a very good one to together because he doesn't play the power play. He kills penalties. He did play a little bit on the point on the second power play unit under Dan Bilesma. He had 26 goals a couple of years ago uh, without scoring a power play goal. That sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> How many did you have uh, in that way? Uh, 23 or 27? 26. He might have 25, Stag. I think he was one short. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remind him of that. <laughs> Predators down by three now. The Penguins get a couple of power play goals, and now Neal shoots it. Flurry the save. Rebound pops up in the air. Crosby had a stick on it. The Predators keep it alive for Weber now to Yossi as Rister off the stick of Kunis. Whacked for the attempt to whack out of midair by Robero. He swung and missed. He turns it out and tries to get it to Neal, but uh, that's broken up, and Hornquist just lifts it back into the Dashville zone. This will be icing. And an opportunity to take a look at our Nissan road ahead. Penguins have a couple of big home games coming up. There they are. Devils and the Kings, the Stanley Cup champs. Buffalo Sabres on the Saturday. I love those Saturday night home games. And then on the road, Staggy. On the road. Minnesota, Winnipeg. And then to Buffalo. Predators with only 14 shots on goal in this hockey game. Flurry scoops one up. The Penguins on the strength of two power play goals are going in the right direction in the third period tonight. Well, last week the Predators got some exciting news when they were named to host the 2016 NHL All-Star Weekend. Now, it marks the first time that the Music City will host the event, but it's not the first time they've been center stage. Bridgestone Arena was also the site of the 2003 draft when the Penguins selected, well, guys, who did they take number one? Oh, well, uh, we were here in yeah. 2003 at that NHL Mark draft. Andre Mark Fleury. Andre Fleury, the Penguins, with the first pick, and... Uh, 
I remember being there with you, Steggy. Right at the back of the arena here, and the Devils moved up to take Zach Brise. What a, what a draft. Penguins made a trade with the Florida Panthers to be able to make that pick. Craig Patrick, puck behind the net. Taylor Beck powering his way out of the area behind the goal over to the near wall where it's taken by Yarn Crock. Latang waiting there, just pushes it back up into Nashville ice. Seth Jones turns it into the neutral zone, taken there by Malkin. Malkin trying to feed it through for Como. Malchenko what? Watches Como as he turns it back in behind the net. Malkin taken into the wall by Jones. Malkin on one knee continues to work hard as the Predators bring it back. It's been a very, very hard working game for Pittsburgh. They've earned everything they've gotten in this one. Look at that back check by Dupuis. Back check. Big Dallas hit. Center Erzo. Off a skate or maybe the stick of Roy and went back against the grain, but wide of the goal. Malkin again. Just a demon right now. This is as good as we've seen him play. He's better in the middle. Yep, enjoying his own position, his natural position as center ice. You think he has to think less, Bobby, as a centerman than he would as a winger? He's able to get his feet moving. He's standing still on the wall too much. He likes to he likes to roam that uh, the planes, if you will. Pascal Dupuis on the back check. Are you kidding me? Look where he starts, Staggy. Right after scoring a power play goal, number nine on the back check, back check, back check, hit. Separating oh. man from puck. And that's fantastic stuff for a guy who only scored two power play goals in the last eight seasons. Has scored the Penguins' third goal tonight, a power play goal. That was a thing of beauty there. Now here's Yossi with it. And a prime example of what you said. Doesn't matter who he's playing with. That's going to happen shift after shift. Here's Neal with it. Fires off the goal post. He hit a goal post the other night against Arizona in overtime and then had the hat trick against Chicago. Well, wow, they tried to get stick on Puck's day, and Flurry reacted. Look at him. He's giving that right post some loving. Aeroff <laughs> tried to get stick on Puck. James Neal just lasered that off that blocker side post. Forsberg throws it in front and a big save by Flurry on the rebound on Roman Yossi. He was busting to the net. Flurry got his right leg down to the blocker to make a save on a second chance opportunity. And Yossi is a defenseman coming in the, the Swiss product. James Neal, take a look. He's able to go across that line, back off the defense. Erhoff tried to come across with him. Over the pad, under the blocker, off the goal post. I asked Neil today, where are you going to shoot on Fleury? He said, I don't know. I haven't told him yet. <laughs> <laughs> so he was planning on letting him know. I'll shoot it here. Try stopping it. <laughs> Here's. Oh. Only Mata sending it up the wall. And it comes back where Seth Jones will handle it now. That would have been a big goal if they would have, that goes in and makes it three to one, put some life in the building here. Yep, and you saw Yossi, the defenseman, moving up too. And now Seth Jones, defenseman, jumps it in. And he's getting up on the rush. So expect that from the Nashville Predators here in the final half of this third. Seth Jones turns behind the net. Like that uh, Jones moving it over now to Volchenkov. His shot was blocked. Latang carries into the Nashville zone for Downey. Jones blocked his shot. Predators trying to get it out. It comes right back to Rob Scuderi. 9.33 to go in the game. Third period. Penguins up three to nothing. Yeah, they're circling the wagons. The Penguins here in Nashville. They had all meetings yesterday. They were not on the ice. There was no media availability, and they had a bunch of meetings. Maybe they figured it out. Scuderi up the wall. Still got a piece of it to direct it back into Nashville territory. And like a 1-2-2, two, two, the Penguins playing here in the neutral zone. Scuderi with it. Picked off by Derek Roy back into the Penguin zone. Roy drops it for Yossi to Roy. Fleury stops him. Good give and go there, but Fleury was ready. Predators coming on now, activating their defense, trying to get that first goal. And Shea Weber can't keep it in. Dishes it across to Roman Yossi. Time ticking away here on the Predators. 
It's a long way back from three. With eight and a half left, the Red Wings did come back. Two goals down in Detroit. What's going to be the trademark for the Penguins here, Bob? When you look at them and watch them these last eight minutes, what will you be looking for that was different from the other night? Battle level. How about our work in the opposition? Look in your head. I'm working as a team. Short little passes, support. Look at Malkin come down to the goal line, chips it up to Como. He chips it out. That's puck support, an easy change. Same thing's got to happen here. You get that center support as the puck goes in the corner. There's Crosby. He's in there working deep. Look at this. Takes it away from Ribeiro. Protects it against Ribeiro and Forsberg. Ribeiro ends up with it. Crosby back in there again, battling. Now it's Neal kicking it free for Ribeiro. Now for Ellis. Diving to the ice. Hornquist. Ellis shot is blocked by Fleury, and then Ellis was injured there. I don't know. Kunitz came out and hit him after he shot the puck. Yeah, he, Kunitz came all the way across from his right point position. Hornquist slid by the fake shot. Of Ellis, and then Kunis came over and just tagged him. Good save by the glove of the flower. Here's Chris Kunis, leads the Penguins in hits this season, and a good hit on Ellis. You see Ellis shooting the puck, and then he stumbled a little bit. He went kind of down low, and a little bit of a higher hit by Kunis coming across. He had to come across as Hornquist slid by Ellis. Gotch to take the draw against Ribeiro. Battle in the circle, and the Penguins come away with it. Brandon Sutter steers it up into the Nashville zone. Spalling in after it. Nick Spalling behind the net for Sutter. Shea Weber watches him. And now it's just a matter of protecting the puck, keeping it on the wall and in the offensive zone for as long as you can. But the Predators take it away and go the other way. Forsberg leaves it there. Centering pass by Yossi never got through. Now they set it up from the corner out to Neal. Neal swings around Sutter who reached out, took it away from him, and he lifts it out to center. Great job there by a spectacular defensive player, Brandon Sutter on James Neal. Neal tried to lose himself up by the blue line. He couldn't shake the Penguins' defense, so he tried to get lost. And the puck was rotated in the offensive zone. It's actually pretty to watch when a team uh, does all the right things in a situation like this, leading three to nothing. Penguins are in a very good rhythm right now, systematically and defensively. It's making it life tough for the Nashville Predators at the moment. Yeah. Well, it's going right this way. It looks there's a hit by Como. See the hitting still continuing for the Penguins. You're eliminating bodies. Wilson goes left side. Shot to the net is stopped by Flurry. And no rebound. Como and I believe it's Ellis. Como went in and forechecked on Ellis again. So Ellis has got hit hard the last two shifts and trying to stand up for himself here. Ooh, there's Simon Dupre, part of our Subway sandwich. Big hit on Eric Nystrom. Yeah. Well, you better hit Nystrom because if you don't, he's going to hit you. And everybody's hitting. We saw, we saw Dupuis out to the Penguins up 3 0. Dupuis on the back check with a hit. Kunitz with a big hit. Como with a big hit. There's Dupuis with a, or uh, Dupre with a big hit. So the physical play is continuing here. Sutter leans in there for the draw against Jokinen. Won the draw. Kunitz brings it back to center. And Weber turns it to the right wing. Darn Crock had dropped the stick and couldn't take the puck there. And now it's Taylor Beck behind in that changing direction. Crosby gets in his face. The Tang lifts it over to Hornquist. Patrick Hornquist wants to get it out. Held in by Yarn Crock right to Ole Mata. Mata on his backhand, couldn't get it out, but now it's whacked out of midair by Crosby to the neutral zone. 5.37 to go. Good back checking effort there by Crosby as he took a pass intended for Beck and just lifted it right back into Nashville ice. Unfortunately, too much on it. It'll be icing. Now we're going to sit down with new head coach Mike Johnston to learn more about his background, his coaching philosophies, and what he has in store for the Pens this season on a special edition of Inside Penguins Hockey. That's coming up tonight after postgame on Roo Sports. We have a timeout here. 
but Mike Johnson will get a chance to do what he was doing right there. Set something up here for the Penguins, the defensive face off to the right of Mark Andre Fleury. Shea Weber, after two periods, had no shots on net. Absolutely no shots on net. And for a guy who led Nashville in goals last year, 23, he's got one of the hardest shots in the game, if not the hardest. Uh, they've been right in his face, Daggy, and he has not had a shot on net in the hockey game, has Shea Weber. Coming in at 19. The guy who's had 23 goals in, in a season twice. Well, he had one more goal than Patrick Hornquist last year to lead the Predators. That's part of the pre-scouting. Yeah, and, uh, and that's exactly Jacques Martin. He comes in. We saw him leaving this morning. He was pre-scouting the Nashville Predators. And then he gives it to the coaching staff, and they present it to the, to the guys uh, the morning of the, of the hockey game this morning, or maybe even yesterday with the day off. And either Gary Agnew or Rick Tockett, they switch off on that pre-scouting uh, you know, whatever they're going to show to the to the Penguins. And they say, you get into the face of Weber. You get right next to him, right tight to him. You force somebody else to beat you. Make him dish it off. Penguins trying to get it out. Neal behind the net of the backhand. Centers it comes through. Now a Will, uh, Jones a shot rebound. And the force Burke can't shoot. The rebound was blocked, I think, by Crosby. And now here's Jones again. Seth Jones with it. Sending it in behind the goal. Neal is there. Neal to Ribeiro. And Mata challenged him, and he lost the puck. And then Kunis uses the wall to get it forward, and Hornquist just follows on, barging to the net. I think he got a shot off there with a man hanging all over him. He was, he just, you weren't going to stop him. He lost his edge, but he was trying to get to the front of the net. He had no thoughts of going behind that net. Did Patrick Hornquist after the timeout, the Penguins get it out of hot water. Sutter. Weber swung it around and Colin Wilson over to get it. Downey right there to cut him off. Now he gets it to Craig Smith who drops it back to Shea Weber. Back to Smith. They can't get into the zone. The Penguins try to clear. Weber held it in. Yossi with a blast wide. The rebound off the boards. Wilson couldn't get to it. And then Spalling got a stick in the way of that. And now it slides back into the Nashville zone again on another icing call. Sacrifice for the Penguins after the timeout. The rested the Penguins come onto the ice. Sidney Crosby with a block here. Look at like a netminder. See how he squared up to that, Staggy? He just didn't choke down on the stick. He's gonna work on that style just a little bit, but he looked like his dad or his sister. <laughs> or him in the ball hockey. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, the ball hockey. They saw in that ball then puck though. Jokinen lost another draw to Brandon Sutter. I'd like to see the numbers on those two tonight. Brandon Taylor Sutter Beck was, down the right wing. He was uh, five of five at last check. Brandon Sutter's day. In yeah, face -off, he, he's been really good. And that was not on his strong side. That last one. 3:40 to go in the period. The Penguins leading three to nothing. Predators have only 20 shots on goal. Malkin, if we can't find the puck, Eckholm's got it. Penguins in the neutral zone, making it difficult now for the Predators as uh, Malkin comes swooping across. They dump it in, chasing his own shoot in. Number 14, Eckholm. Good work, though, by the Penguins in deep as Debray swung it around, and then Scuderi just tapped it back up towards Nashville ter territory. And the Predators back on the attack. Neal dumps it behind the goal. Flurry tries to clear it. Dies there on the boards. Crosby comes in to help. Now it's Como making the tough play on the boards, and he's able to get it out. A couple of tough plays there. Como, Simon Dupre in his own end, protecting the puck, getting it out. Forsberg over the line. Kunitz down the wing. Weber shields the puck from him. Seth Jones sends it around. Paul Martin just shoves it right back in over the line. It's taken by Weber. And this is a clinic right now the Penguins are putting on to protect this lead. Three to nothing. Look at the work. I mean, you're getting that backtracking. You get your big guys leading the way here off the glove of Flurry here. Penguins have control again, and it's going to be cleared. How many times you saw that clear and a change, Deggy? See, the, the, the changes are good. You're not extending your shift past 30 seconds, and that's a key as well. You cannot get you on the ice 40, 50 seconds 
when you're up in hockey games. You just 30 seconds and get off, let the next guys get out there. And that's the only way you can keep that rate up. Smith with a shot off the stick of Mata up into the netting behind the Penguins goal. 156 remaining. Just as we promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. There it is. There's a lot of people fighting for the Miller Lights right now on Broadway. Yeah, let's, let's give it to Malkin this time. He went and dead on the power play, and then Crosby with that shot pass redirect. And there's another big faceoff win by Marcel Gotch. He's got great numbers in the faceoff circle. Sutter over. Wax. Two set back to the Nashville line. Yeah, they had two centers. It seemed like Johnson not missing a beat. Had two centers on the ice there for that faceoff. Sutter and Gotch. Gotch goes off the ice. Latang back hands it up the wall. There's uh, Craig Adams now on the boards. A minute 33 to go. Predators have to regroup in the neutral zone. Adams goes to the bench. Jokinen's shot sails wide and off a stick and up into the net. And Jokinen's playing left wing now. He's been on center for a long time. A veteran, 35 years old, Ole Jokinen. Well, quiet in this building. This is a game we thought was going to be uh, evenly matched going in. But the Penguins just were uh, persistent, patient as Rick Tock had wanted. He got that. Ribeiro directing traffic before the faceoff. And they stopped Neal. But Neal did hit two goal posts today. He won on a redirect and one here in the third period. The resolve was great here in the third period. And their shot volume. First two periods was uh, spectacular. Here they've just been working hard to get the puck out, taking away time and space. There's Dupuy back checking again, taking the puck away in the neutral zone. We're under a minute to go in the hockey game. This has been a clinic for the Penguins. Of course, they had only a 1 0 lead going to the period, but they scored a pair of power play goals. And. Now they've just done a great job to protect it. We're down to 37 seconds. The puck in the Penguin zone. Seth Jones going back for it in his own end. <laughs> 23 seconds to go. Look at that steal by too many Kunitz. Men, too many men on the ice again for the Penguins. They got caught. They got caught. The referee was looking. He saw five white jerseys on the ice and he made the call right away with 21 left. So the second too many men on the ice for Pittsburgh here. Well they got to kill the last 21 seconds. They just can make it trying to make it more difficult on themselves or they're trying to pump up their PK numbers here. So a quick look here at the far blue line. Two guys jump for one. You got to yeah, not enough, not enough guys off the ice quick enough. Remember James Neal said today in the locker room, the way Peter Laviolette coaches, he thought it would be an up and down game, a lot of chances. Here's a quick shot by Smith. Stopped it. Flurry makes sure he gloves it, and that's a good thing because he had Colin Wilson coaching for the rebound. Mark Andre Flurry, boy, he's been solid in this hockey game, like he is most nights. Smith trying to win the draw against Gotch. And the Predators control it. It's Yossi with it, fakes the shot. Moves it over to Weber, a shot, and it's blocked in front. And here's Wilson with it. He tries to get it to the net. A chance for Smith, and Fleury makes the save just as time expires. The Predators were trying to break the shutout. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. Give him 29 for his career, Marc-Andre Fleury. 24 saves, a couple, a couple big here at the final buzzer and uh, he matches his number with 29 career saves and it goes to 9-4 in one in 14 games played after a rest. And don't forget, he had the shutout on this same date against the Islanders. We showed that to you earlier in the, yeah. in the show. We'll be back with more from Nashville as the folks will be spilling out into the street here tonight. And the Penguins will be going home with two points in the bank leading uh, the way tonight. Sidney Crosby with the winning goal.